Hey guys, Phil here, and uh, today it's another Ruby on Rails chat, and um, just check the recording. And today I want to talk about this kind of, I'm going to do, I think, a little series here, maybe two or three parts at least, talking about this new-ish technology called Hotwire. And I can go over there and show you their fancy flashing logo. So what is Hotwire, you might ask? Well, it's very clever, the name, Hotwire, H-O-T, standing for HTML, HTML, over the wire, H-O-T wire. And, you know, in, in earlier things, I've talked about uh, doing action cable and using stimulus to connect to that action cable stream and, you know, sending the data over and everything like this. Hotwire is basically a way to make that more simple, but also to allow us to do more of our rendering on the back end. As Rails developers, we're not React or Angular developers here, so we don't like to send JSON. And I personally, you know, I'm a long time Rails developer, I like to do all the H, write the HTML on the back end and send that up to the server. And Hotwire lets you do that. And they claim that it makes, you know, fast first load pages and uh, things like this. I don't know if necessarily it's a speed improvement. I don't think it's a speed detriment, but I don't think it's a speed improvement. Uh, I don't, I, I think it's just, this is the way we work and it's a solution for Rails developers. If you are somebody who likes to do the JSON back and forth or whatever, then you know maybe this isn't for you. But for me, this is a pretty cool and exciting uh, suite of technologies because it is a suite of technologies. Uh, the way that it works is that, so Hotwire, you have this, I, I could do some funny little drawings, but I'm not. Hotwire is this thing. And it's kind of three components, though the third one is a bit mysterious. And it is, you know, using uh, stimulus, and it is using something called Turbo, which is kind of a way of sending, streaming that data across uh, using Action Cable, really. So it's kind of a mixture of Action Cable, Stimulus, Turbo, and something called Strata, that I have no idea what it is, there's no real, they say it's in beta and blah, blah, blah. I don't really know what it is. So um, what I'm going to do is show you how to set up a Hotwire application and, and talk a little bit more about uh, the coolness of it. And then in the next one, I'm going to get more into actually developing that application and uh, building out some features and, and showing you some other stuff that you can do with Hotwire. So let's flip over here. Uh, and we can create a new, let me move this window. What am I doing? Let's move this window over somewhere else. And yeah, okay, I do have this up. So I'm using uh, Rails 6.1.3, and I'm gonna do a Rails new um, hot wired, and let's use a database. What should we use today? Let's use Postgres. QL. So the interesting thing about Hotwire is that uh, you know it does everything using that same kind of restful uh, verbiage that we are you know used to the get uh, so a new create edit update delete you know that crud stuff that we use in, uh, the restful stuff that we use in Rails and you can kind of reuse that with a different format to serve back your data. And that means that we only have to write one set of partials and things like this. It does use a lot of partials. So 
Uh, in the past, um, I kind of shied away from doing too many partials because there is actually a speed impact of using a lot of partials. Excuse me, I really need coffee. There is a, a kind of speed impact um, because you have to think, you know, that on the back end it's got to load up all these partials and put them together and stitch them together to give you an HTML page. But in recent times, Rails 5 and Rails, well, maybe later part of Rails 4 and 5 and 6, doing that, the overhead is very, is very small. So it's okay to use more partials. And because of that, uh, Hotwired depends on using partials. So let's say, for instance, you have a, an index page that lists a bunch of things, you know, like I could go back and use our cable guy application that we, uh, that I did the other time it shows library books. And, you know, I had each library book was represented by, you know, uh, a partial. Those are the partials that you will send back over Hotwire. So you can reuse them on simple gets as well as Hotwire dynamic updates. It's interesting, I think. And um, sometime in the next decade, when my machine finishes making the, uh, the Rails app, I don't know why, maybe because I'm running OBS, it's taking a long time. So that's a, that's a key feature, I think, that you need to know. And so you're going to be using a lot of partials. The basic idea of, of Hotwire is that it creates kind of frames on the page. These are not iframes, these are DOM frames. So it's just a div with an ID and so on, and has and uses stimulus to load those frames in. So you can reload that part, but it, like frames, links inside of that frame stay within the frame. So yeah, it's, it, it is a slight change, and you do have to slightly uh, change your partials, which, you know, uh, a lot of the tutorials I've seen kind of gloss over. Now for me, I was doing a lot of stuff, uh, you know, with JavaScript, when you load a page, there's a whole bunch of JavaScript on the page that, you know, reacts to certain things or whatever. If you still need to do that when you load in a partial, in other words, it's just not blah, a block of data with some links, if you need to do stuff inside of that, react to it with uh, JavaScript and so on, that's where you're going to need to write stimulus controllers. So stimulus controllers are still important. Um, we can skip over. We don't have to create the stimulus controllers to do the hotwire stuff, but we still need stimulus controllers if that's what you're doing before. I have an application, um, you know, another uh, project of mine called bookmatchclub.com, which is a tool for authors to distribute their works and so on and uh, get reviews and readers and everything like that. Now, Bookmatch Club, I'm thinking of open sourcing that um, code. And if I don't open source that, what I might do is I'm going to be using that um, to rewrite everything using Hotwire. And that's what I'm going to be uh, using kind of as a demo probably over the next several uh, videos that I do about Rails, and yes, I've used the word probably about 25 times. Okay, so the thing is all built. Um, we can zip into the the uh, directory. I, I remembered to zoom the screen this time so you can actually see what I'm doing. So when we've got, um, we want to add Hotwire, it's pretty simple, and you know, I. I don't even know that, I, I don't understand why I didn't know this command as well. Doing these videos has been very informative for me. You know how sometimes what I would do um, before is I would go into the gem file, you know, and I would, you know, add gem, hotwire, rails, and so on. You don't have to do that. I don't know when they added this. Again, it's just one of those things sometimes that you miss out on. You can do this from the command line. Bundle add hotwire rails. And it actually will even be more clever than me and see it adds the gem hotwire rails with a version number and everything like that. 
And hot wire rails, when you put that into your project, let me just, uh, you can see that it's going to add in stimulus and uh, turbo rails and hot wire rails. I wonder if we can see that more clearly that, it, that that's what it's doing. No. So, uh, but here's the three packages here that it's going to add. Stimulus rails is kind of the updated version of stimulus. Um, or the latest version of stimulus with some added goodies. And turbo rails is the replacement of turbo links. <clears throat> and turbo rails now does a kind of streaming and with a format of turbo and hot wire rails, which is kind of the glue that sticks everything together. So we've added those things in and it runs a bundle automatically. So when you do bundle add, where is it? Bundle add. Put that thing in, Gems Hot Wire Rails, and ran a bundle which added in the Stimulus Rails, Turbo Rails, and so on. Just want to see. Yeah. So, okay, we're good to go. Now, the next thing we do is simply do a Rails Hot Wire install. And this will set up all the glue that we need. And let's see what it does here. It adds in some yarn packages of stimulus. Adds in the yarn package for turbo rails. Does some other goodies. It creates, um, uh, updates some stuff in application JS and it modifies cable YAML. Now if we look at cable, Remember how I said before when I did that other video about um, using action cable, how the bloody thing doesn't work locally unless you use Redis? And well, so now when you install Hotwire, it actually changes uh, cable to use Redis uh, locally. And what else did it add? App.js, let's take a look at application.js. Uh, we can see that it's importing the Hotwire Turbo Rails stuff. And do we have anything else in here? It very nicely puts in this uh, index of, you know, for all the stimulus stuff. So you don't have to figure that out anymore. I actually think that using the Hotwire uh, Rails install is the easiest and best way to get stimulus into your project. So even if you're not gonna use Hotwire, um, using uh, Hotwire Rails installer to get stimulus is probably the best thing to do. Um, I don't think it adds anything else. So that's all you need to do to set up Hotwire on your app. I want to keep this as a short one. Like I say, it's just an introduction to the concepts of Hotwire. And I'm going to do another video where I do an application, not a chat application, um, that uses Hotwire to dynamically uh, update information on the screen. And I'm gonna go on again about how I don't like to use chat applications as an example for Rails, or nobody's writing the new Twitter, or, and nobody's writing a chat app, um, but and also the other thing is a lot of these things show, oh, you know, if you have multiple people looking at the same screen and so on, that doesn't happen very often in my experience. In my experience, what we are doing is writing siloed uh, tenant applications, you know, where somebody logs in, they see their data, but that data might be updated by other means, you know, like, um, for instance, in the book application, uh, you as an author, you have your website and you have your stats and your dashboard, but while you're looking at your dashboard, maybe a reader is going to log in and download the copy of, of your book. So you want that to upload, update on your dashboard while you're watching it. That's the kind of thing that we're talking about using Hotwire for. Anyway, that's it. First introduction. Uh, probably in about a week, I'll have another video where I do a Hotwire app for you. See you then.